who are a cut above. Join the Indian Air Force to be a cut above. Hello and welcome to Kashmir Now. I am your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's take a look at what made news this week. Former leader in POJK administration exposes failures and corruption in governance. International universities hold academic counseling sessions for the students of Kashmir. New state-of-the-art auditorium and a student hostel inaugurated in Shere Kashmir University of Agriculture, Science and Technology in Srinagar. The Indian Army installs 108-foot-high national flag in the border town of Uri. And in our special section of Incredible India, we take you to explore the Neem Rana Palace in Rajasthan, where historical grandeur meets modern luxury. The concerns over mismanagement of projects in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir are reaching a boiling point. Zaheed Amin Kashif, the former chairman of the Prime Minister's Inspection and Import Commission, has sounded the alarm over what he describes as the failure of the current administration to deliver on its promises. Let's delve deeper into the issues highlighted by Kashif. The mismanagement of projects in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir has become a pressing concern raising questions about governance, transparency and accountability within the region. Numerous instances of inefficiency Delays and allegations of corruption have marred the execution of vital infrastructure initiatives, leaving POJK's residents frustrated and disillusioned. One of the glaring issues plaguing POJK is the failure to deliver on promised mega-projects. Despite assurances from the administration, the past financial year saw a conspicuous absence of profitable ventures. Even smaller scale projects with budgets as modest as 2 crore fail to materialize reflecting a systematic breakdown in project planning and execution. Zahid Amin Kashif, the former chairman of the Prime Minister's Inspection and Import Commission of POJK, recently raised his voice against the wrongdoings of the current administration in the region. اس ایک ترقیاتی سال میں جس میں وزیراعظم چودری انوار الحق صاحب رہے ہیں اور ہیں ایک نیا میگا پروجیکٹ بھی مزفر آباد کو جسے آپ تار الحکومت عذاب کشمی کا کہتے ہیں اور کیپٹل سٹی کہتے ہیں اور یہ ایک حلقہ بھی ہے پوری ایک انتخابی کانسیچوینسی بھی ہے ایک ترقیاتی میگا پروجیکٹ بڑا پروجیکٹ چھے کروڑ دو کروڑ سے اوپر کر ایک بھی نہیں مل سکا تیس کروڑ چالیس کروڑ کی تو بات کی بات ہے نہ صرف یہ ہوا بلکہ جو جاریہ پروجیکٹس تھے جتنے بھی تھے انہیں انہوں نے طریقے سے سوچ ان کا آف کر دیا منجمت جسے کہتے ہیں فریز کر دینا تاکہ لوگ سمجھیں In his scathing critic, Kasif lays bare the stark reality of administrative failures in POJK revealing a litany of broken promises and systematic deficiencies چار چوک تھے مزفر آباد کے ایک چوک پہ ابھی کام تھوڑا تھوڑا آستہ جاری ہے اور تین چوکوں کو انہوں نے آف کر دی ہے اندازہ کیجئے باشد دنگان مزفر آباد ایک آر سی سی پل منظور شدہ ہے جسے چیلا آر سی سی بریج کہتے ہیں ون ففٹی سکس میٹر جس کی لیندھ ہے ماہرین کے مطابق موجودہ چیلا بریج کی مدت پوری ہو چکی خطرناک عالت میں As the echoes of Zahid Amin Kashif's revelations reverberate across Musafra Abad, it's clear that the concerns over administrative failures in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir have reached a critical juncture. The allegations of mismanagement, 
corruption and neglect have struck a chord with residents who are growing increasingly disillusioned with the current state of affairs. Kasif's stark assessment sheds light on the systematic breakdown in governance, transparency and accountability within POJK. The failure to deliver on promised mega projects, the abandonment of crucial infrastructure initiatives and the absence of key officials during vital planning phases paint a grim picture of an administration in disarray. Moving on, in a groundbreaking move, European and international universities have brought MBBS admission counselling to the doorsteps of the students in Jammu and Kashmir. For the first time, students could directly interact with the prominent global institutions and explore some amazing educational opportunities for themselves. Such efforts not only enhance academic prospects but also promote cultural exchange and medical tourism, marking a significant development for the region. Have a look. Offering new opportunities and aspirations to the students, several European and international universities conducted counselling sessions in the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. For the first time in many years, students in Jammu and Kashmir are receiving doorstep facilities for MBBS admissions in international universities, particularly in European countries such as Georgia. So now, as long as Kashmir is concerned, because uh, we are the remotest part in India, so here it's, it's quite uh, a new thing, like some uh, international chains or international colleges may come down to our place and uh, counsel students one-to-one -one and give them a uh, chance to uh, ask uh, about the studies uh, there in their uh, countries. So in this case, we have a Georgia colleges, so they have come down. This groundbreaking initiative is spearheaded by prominent consultants and career counsellors from various countries aiming to provide the youth of Jammu and Kashmir with access to global educational opportunities. The head of Georgia University along with other higher officials visited Kashmir to conduct an associate meet come seminar focusing on MBBS and other higher education avenues in international countries. Delegates from European countries, Georgia and India participated in this enriching dialogue discussing education and job opportunities for study. It's a great pleasure to be uh, just here as a guest uh, with your fantastic and very beautiful nation and country. Now a few words about the purpose of our visit. So uh, we came here just to disseminate, to share information about international education. I mean MBBS, so we can uh, share with you some very uh, good information that what we can offer your students, I mean students uh, or applicants or prospective students of Kashmir, how to get international education in Georgia. So we can um, tell them that we are ready to offer a very high quality education in medical uh, field, in medicine. And uh, so just the um, uh, mission of our visit here is to uh, try to help the future of medicine to the better. Because of this region that students had uh, before limited opportunities, so we came here for this purpose exactly, to give them more chances, more opportunities and to raise awareness of uh, getting uh, this international education abroad and this time in Georgia. So that is the main purpose of our visit here and to help them to overcome those barriers and those obstacles that they have had so far. This initiative reflects the evolving global education scene in India. Bringing these resources directly to the students' doorsteps, the initiative eliminated the need for the students to travel to metropolis like New Delhi, Mumbai or Bangalore, making the process more accessible and convenient. MBBS in Georgia has better facility as compared to the uh, baki countries. There is better facility and infrastructure ke se bhi wo better in Georgia. This is a monumental development for the region. Beyond education, such initiatives are set to boost cultural exchange and medical tourism, 
fostering a brighter and more interconnected future for the region. A new state-of-the-art auditorium and a student hostel have been recently inaugurated at Shere Kashmir University of Agriculture, Science and Technology in Srinagar. This significant development aims to enhance academic activities and improve facilities for the university students. Students and researchers are delighted with these advancements which will further elevate the university's national standing and support its crucial role in promoting the agriculture sector in the valley. Take a look. Providing a significant impetus to the students and researchers of Sheri Kashmir University of Agriculture, Science and Technology, the Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha inaugurated several infrastructure projects in the university. The projects inaugurated by the Lieutenant Governor included Shalimar Convention Center, Kohimaran Hostel and Discovery Building. <laughs> The new auditorium Shalimar stands as a beacon of progress providing a modern and comfortable space for academic activities, conferences and research presentation. Its inauguration brought a wave of excitement and optimism to the entire caste community. को सिर्फ ये महदूद नहीं है कि इधर कश्मीर में लोग जा रहे हैं अब मुझे लग रहा है इंटरनेशनल लेवल पे भी जर्मनी में लोग जा रहे हैं कि सुकास्ट के है कि यूनिवर्सिटी है तो यहां पे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तो बना जैसे आज जो ये जो आज का जो ये कार्यक्रम था जो जो लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर मनोज सिन्हा साहब ने इसका ये उद्घाटन किया यहां पे जो कन्वेंशन सेंटर था शालिमार कन्वेंशन सेंटर मुझे लग रहा है कि एसके आरसीसी के बाद अगर कोई मुझे लग रहा उस प्रकार की टक्कर का कोई ऑडिटोरियम है तो वो यहां सुकास्ट में आज उसका इनोग्रेशन हुआ इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ स्टूडेंट टू हैव द बेस्ट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो दैट वी कैन केटर टुवर्ड्स आवर फ्यूचर जनरेशंस जितना बेहतर हमारा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर होगा उतना बेहतरीन तरीके से हम पढ़ पाएंगे और उतना बेहतरीन तरीके से हम फ्यूचर में कंट्रीब्यूशन दे पाएंगे द फैक्ट दैट हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी ने एक बहुत बड़ा स्टेप लिया है हमारे लिए ऑडिटोरियम आज इनोग्रेट करवाया है जो कि एल जी सर खुद आए थे हमारा इनोग्रेशन करवाने तो उस चीज को लेकर हम बहुत थैंकफुल है क्योंकि ऐसे इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर थिंग्स लाइक इन ऑडिटोरियम एंड डिस्कवरी बिल्डिंग लैंग्वेज लैब्स ए आई लैब्स दीज थिंग फॉस्टर अ ग्रेट एनवायरमेंट फॉर अ स्टूडेंट इन एनी सेक्टर वी नीड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो दैट इज वाई सुकास्ट कश्मीर है टेकिंग दिस इनिशियटिव एंड वी हैव ऑनरेबल एल जी हैव इनोग्रेटेड मेजर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वर्क हेयर एमिंग दम इज सी लाइब्रेरी एंड and uh, this language library and uh, um, convention center is there and artificial intelligence center is there as we have uh, come with uh, various uh, msc and bsc uh, programs uh, as well so we need this infrastructure for uh, those uh, programs uh, to conduct in very smooth manner uh, that is why uh, uh, we were here today and uh, it is uh, uh, we feel honored that uh, honorable lg come here and uh, inaugurated these various projects Scast has been instrumental in producing top-notch scientists and researchers contributing significantly to the agriculture sector both regionally and nationally. The recent infrastructural advancements ensure that the university continues to uphold its prestigious reputation. As the university continues to reach new heights, the new infrastructure stands as a testament to the enduring commitment to excellence and progress. ensuring that the students and researchers can thrive in an environment designed for success the indian army has recently installed 108 foot high national flag at the line of control in uri town of baramulla district of the union territory of jammu and kashmir The majestic plaque symbolizing national pride and unity is emerging as a new attraction in the scenic landscape of Uri. The initiative is promoting border tourism and providing a chance to the countrymen to honor the sacrifices of brave soldiers in maintaining peace and prosperity in the border region. 
the powerful display of patriotism and national integration certainly fosters a sense of unity among the citizens. Take a look. In the serene landscape of Uri town, against the majestic backdrop of the line of control, stands a symbol of immense pride and unity, a 108-foot-high national flag. Installed by the Indian Army, this magnificent flag has quickly become a beacon of patriotism and a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors from near and far. The flag not only serves as a visual spectacle, but also stands as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by our brave soldiers in the security of the nation. यहाँ पे एक फ्लैग है जो 108 फीट का है और बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है यहाँ पे आकर और यहाँ पे कुछ दिन पहले ही इसकी ओपनिंग सेरेमनी हुई थी और यहाँ पे जो टूरिज्म आ रहा है और जो टूरिस्ट यहाँ पे आ रहे हैं हमें बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है और खासकर अगर यहाँ पे हम आर्मी की बात करें आर्मी ने इसमें बहुत अच्छा पार्ट लिया है क्योंकि आर्मी ही यहाँ पे यूथ को बूस्ट करती है और आर्मी ने ही ये यहाँ पे जो ये स्टेप उठाया है कमान पोस्ट का जो यहाँ पे टूरिस्ट आते हैं यहाँ से पहले अगर हम चार साल पहले की बात करें तो यहाँ पे एक खंडर टाइप होता था ये इतना अच्छा नहीं होता था लेकिन चार साल में यहाँ पे आर्मी ने इतना डेवलप किया है बहुत अच्छा लगता है यहाँ पे जब बाहर के लोग आते हैं और हमारे उड़ी को देखने आते हैं हमारे कमान पोस्ट को देखने आते हैं हमारे बॉर्डर एरिया को देखने आते हैं तो बहुत अच्छा लगता है टूरिस्ट हियर गेट द ऑपरचुनिटी टू पे होमेज टू दीज वैलियंट हीरोकिंग इन द ब्रेथ टेकिंग व्यूज ऑफ द सराउंडिंग लैंडस्केप The command post in Uri has become a focal point for visitors in recent times. The residents were elated with the new developments in the region and they hope for more employment generation through tourism. Yahan pe jo tourism ka flow hai wo dekhne ko banta hai jo last year humne yahan pe observe kiya tha ki 70000 plus tourists aaye the aur is saal abhi tak hum 18000 se tourists zyada cross kar chuke hain yahan pe aana aur hum ye chahte hain ki yahan pe aur log aaye jitne zyada yahan log aayenge isse hamari employment generate hogi hamare sath jis tarah se hum teen aur bhi padhe likhe logo ko kaam karne ka mauka milega aur yahan pe jo home stays hain wahan ke yahan ke logo ko bhi fayda milega As more visitors flock to witness this awe-inspiring sight, the Border Tourism Initiative is gaining momentum. The command post has also been visited by several leaders and personalities in the past, which further signifies the historical importance of this place. ये आने वाले वक्त का मैं ये आपको एक भविष्यवाणी देता हूँ कि आने वाले वक्त में इंशाअल्लाह कमान पोस्ट एक बहुत बड़ा टूरिस्ट मकाम बनेगा. We are really thankful to the Indian Army. We are really thankful to the administration. जिन्होंने ये परमिशन का जो सिस्टम है वो बहुत आसान किया है और मैं आपके माध्यम से तमाम लोगों से ये उनको इनवाइट करता हूं कि आप भी उड़ी आए देखें कमान पोस्ट को देखें और बिल्कुल एक इजी वे में आपको परमिशन मिल जाती है बाय शो केसिंग दिस पावरफुल सिंबल ऑफ नेशनल यूनिटी द बॉर्डर टूरिज्म इनिशिएटिव एम्स टू फॉस्टर अ डीप सेंस ऑफ पैट्रिटिज्म एंड अप्रिशिएशन फॉर दोज हु प्रोटेक्ट आर बॉर्डर्स The flag in Uri is more than just a tourist attraction. It is a symbol of hope and resilience, standing tall as a testament to the unwavering spirit of our nation. In India, forts and heritage buildings are being transformed into luxury hotels, blending historical grandeur with modern amenities. the strength preserves cultural heritage while offering unique opulent experiences to guests driving tourism and providing sustainable economic benefits to the local communities let's explore the neemrana fort in rajasthan where ancient history meets modern luxury nestled amid the stunning aravalli hills neemrana fort palace dates back to the 15th century and was built by Prithvi Raj Chauhan of the Chauhan dynasty Recognizing its historical and architectural significance historians and architects led by Neemrana Hotels group chairman Amarnath restored the fort in 1986 Transformed into a heritage hotel, Neemrana Fort Palace now invites guests to relish in its captivity charm and ancient marvels. 
revitalizing this historic site while preserving its cultural heritage. I think that um, heritage is a big strength of India because when we have a civilization which is 5,000, 7,000 years old, which other countries don't have, so now that we are respecting our heritage, so everybody will come to see that. So that is our USP or unique selling proposition. And uh, luxury also has many different uh, definitions. You know, luxury can only be $1,000 and you're, you know, do all that. But Nimrana is experiential luxury. You have everything, but you have the beauty of an experience which is unique and which you can't have elsewhere. So that, I think, is a, should be the fastest growing sector. Why would people come to see India's cities or its high-rise buildings? That is very much wanted because it's development. But with heritage tourism, the good thing that's going to happen is that these heritage properties are in rural areas, in far-flung places. At Neemrana Fort Palace, guests experience Rajasthan's royal heritage with modern conveniences. Luxurious rooms like Maharaja and Maharani suites, duplex suites and heritage rooms offer grandeur and sophistication, equipped with amenities like private jacuzzis, swings and royal beds. Guests can also savor authentic Rajasthani cuisine amidst the regal ambience. It's such a memorable experience always. The architecture, the rooms, the names of the rooms. I remember last time when I was a kid, I stayed at Badal Mahal. And it was a big impact on me just because the room was blue, it had clouds. It's just the theme is so special and you wake up and there's peacocks singing and then you go for a swim. The peacocks are right there. Kabutar is like a drinking the water from the pool. It's just, it's so different. It's such a unique, special experience. I love traveling. And I especially love traveling to heritage places. Whenever I'm traveling to a new place, I always look whether there is a heritage property there or not. Because the charm of a heritage property far outweighs a new property which is there. New pro properties generally don't have any character. But heritage properties have so much character, really, as such. They, they evoke history. And I always love going to such places. Neemrana Fort Palace stands as a prime example of adaptive reuse, preserving history while offering modern luxury. In addition to its exquisite carvings, the fort contains other historic structures such as Suraj Kund, Jal Mahal and Nikumbh Mahal Palace. In terms of services, we have food, lodging, spa services, hai, recreational activities. Hai. Recreational activities, we have a camel cart, hai, camel ride, hai, vintage ride. Hai. The preservation of ancient architecture through adaptive reuse of historic structures showcases Rajasthan's commitment to its rich cultural heritage, providing modern comforts amidst historical splendor. That's all we have for you in this week's episode. Goodbye and take care.